They are sent out to preach with authority and prepare the way in all the places where he would go. Our gospel reading today is the report of when they came back. And if you recall, they were, they were astounded. The, the, all these disciples came back and they, were, they, they marveled. Even, even the demons are subject to us. Jesus' response is important, both for them, for them and for us. Do not, do not rejoice, Jesus says. Do not rejoice that the demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. It has, as we said at the beginning, it has always been tempt. Angels are, are, are marvelous, fearful creatures. And by the way, demons are simply angels who have rebelled against God. Okay. It's always been tempting for humans to get fixated on angels and even to worship them. But Christ the Lord today calls us out of all forms of false worship. Christ the Lord calls us to worship Him, the Lord, and serve Him only. Now to, to illustrate just how easy it is to fall in this trap, even St. John, John of the Gospel of John, John the Apostle, John, John the one who wrote the three letters of John, the John to whom the revelation to St. John was given, that John, near the very tail end of the Bible, this is Revelation 22, records this. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Now Jesus enters here. Jesus is speaking. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And now John, the apostle, speaks. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But the angel said to me, You must not do that, for I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers the prophets and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Now what are then, again, angels? Created spiritual beings. I think the most simple definition is in Hebrews chapter 1. By the way, if you want to find out what angels are, for the love of God, don't do a Google search. <laughs> I, I mean that. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll end up with all kinds of just nonsense and speculation, as with so many other, with everything, especially related to the faith. Open the scriptures. And I think the simplest definition and most helpful, quite frankly, is in the first chapter of Hebrews, verse 14. Are angels not ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Now angels, when you look at the scriptures concerning them, angels are, are fearsome, wonderful beings. For example, in Genesis 3, there is a fierce, fearsome cherubim placed in front of the, after the fall into sin to guard the tree of life. In Isaiah chapter 6, seraphim, fearsome seraphim with six wings are in the throne of heaven worshiping, and Isaiah the prophet is allowed to hear them sing, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. In Daniel 10, Israel's prince angel Michael, whose name means who is like God, is fighting a spiritual battle against the evil angels associated with the region of Persia. In Daniel 12, Michael is also responsible for part of the sorting of the faithful and the unfaithful on the last day, the, resurrection, the day of resurrection of all our bodies. In Luke chapter 1, the fearsome angel Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary to announce that she would be the mother of God and give birth to the Savior of the world. In Luke 2, at the birth of Christ, the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and then with innumerable angels singing, Glory to God in the highest. Angels are fearsome spirit beings who again, as Hebrews 1 tells us, 
are ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. So who is it then that is to inherit salvation? Us, the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. Human beings are not just accidents of nature according to the Scriptures. Human, human beings, according to God, are the very height of creation, made body and soul in the image and likeness of God. The evil angels following Satan did not like God's created order and rebelled. But the faithful angels, like Michael and Gabriel, rejoice in God and in our respective places in God's created order And that's why in Luke 15, Jesus says, Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 1 in full, where the ministry of of angels and of Christ are contrasted. Clearly, faithful angels rejoice not in themselves, Faithful angels rejoice in Christ who came to reconcile the whole world, the whole cosmos to Himself. Angels are fearsome and wonderful and mysterious. And again, it has always been tempting for humans to worship them. And Satan, the great deceiver, loves that. If you recall, Satan even tried, even tempted Jesus to do that. This is from Matthew 4. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then the devil left him, and behold, Angels, faithful angels, came and were ministering to Jesus. We can get really into the weeds trying to figure angels out, but there is, there is a lot of mystery here. We are wiser, as we said earlier, simply to trust God's Word that angels are ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. And friends, we are, we are in a great spiritual battle. But we are not in this alone. We have one another. We have the angels who assist us in the spiritual realm in ways mysterious to us, but widely attested in Scripture. In Matthew 10, Jesus tells us, A disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant to be like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? We will be tested, for we are not above our teacher, Jesus. You see, the devil, though, wants us to think that we're greater than Jesus, that we can be our own gods. He would have us focus on anything that is not the one true God. Angels, for example. Success, for another example. At work, at home, at school, athletics, music, you name it. He would have us focus on health or wealth or party politics. You, you name it. The, the list of things that are not God are as long as there are sinful human beings. Think about it. When, when, we, when we chase after things, when we zero in and focus as if it's the most important, when we chase after things that are not God. Success in sports, recognition by others, investment growth, home improvements, again, the list is endless. When we, when we chase after these things that are not God, 
Is it ever, is it ever enough? Kids, if you, if you have Christian grandparents, ask them. Think about the verse, right? They'll, t- they'll tell you. Jesus, Jesus says in Matthew, seek first the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God and His righteousness. All the other things will fall in place. A- kids, ask, if you have, again, if you have Christian grandparents, ask them. They'll tell you. The boat will never be big enough. The car will never be cool enough. The house will never quite be finished. The, the spiritual ecstasy of whatever it is will never be powerful enough. We, we all, all of us, need to recognize that the devil is trying to drag us away from Christ and into separation from God, into hell. And he will do whatever is necessary to do that, whether that's the worship of angels or the litany of other things that we have talked about. None of those things, none of those things can save us. Angels, for example, angels don't have bodies. Only only one with a body could stand in our place under the requirements of the law of God and pay the price for the sins of the whole world. Only one with the body could do that. Michael couldn't do it. He's not God. Gabriel couldn't do it. Neither one of them could say, it is finished, and have it be true. Satan certainly could not say, it is finished, and have it be true. Only Jesus, fully God and fully man, could pay the price in body and soul for the sins of the world. Christians, you know this is true. You know it. Contentment can only be found in God. True forgiveness, the forgiveness that gives us rests of soul and then truly enables us to enjoy all of God's created order, that can only be found in Christ who is risen from the dead. You know this. So, let us then, all of us, repent of our false gods, whatever they may be. For Christ the Lord calls us to worship the Lord, to worship God, to worship Him and serve Him only. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.